hello youtube photographer on sweet and I try. in this tutorial i'm going to show you how i color grade and retouch full body portraits or full portraits within photoshop i know i've been doing so many of the close-up photos and i'll take you through the retouching process for a full outdoor portrait within just photoshop and this time around we are not going to be dealing with caption and as you can see i've already imported my image into photoshop and it is a raw file and it's just going to automatically open my camera raw filter and you can see it is a raw file taken using a Canon 6D camera and I shot it at ISO 250 using a 70-200 Tamron lens and the shutter, the shutter speed was 1 out of 1600 of a second and I shot at f2.8 so basically what I would do, I would do the basic adjustments and color grading in camera raw I'm just going to come right here and i'm going to take the highlights down and i'm going to take the whites down and by the way if at all this video helps you in one way or another make it a point that you hit the like button because when you hit the like button youtube youtube is going to recommend this video to so many people out there who are interested in learning about retouching and color grading in general so i'm just going to come and open up the shadows slightly come and pump up the contrast of the image just like that just going to turn down the exposure by a tiny bit and i'm going to come and add some clarity and take down the blacks and that is going to add contrast within the image then after that, i'm just going to come to the vibrance and make the image a little bit more vibrant then i'm going to come to the color mixer and under this i'm just going to take the luminance of the blues down to have it pop just like that so that looks okay but i'm not going to take it all the way down after i'm going to come to my hues and i'm going to make my greens a little bit more on the yellow side i'm going to take the yellows towards uh, the oranges just like that then i'm going to come down to my calibration because i want the image to pop I'm just going to come to the blue primer and I'm just going to pump that up because I want the image to pop in this way. So this looks okay and it looks great. So I'm just going to hew down the blues a little bit towards the aquas just like that. So right now let me show you a quick before and after. So this is the before and after for just processing the rofer and the image is already popping. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to come and press open right here. In order to open the image into Photoshop for us to do a screen retouching and any adjustments that may be required on the image. So this is from a trail I did before. And if at all you haven't checked it out, I would recommend that you check it out because it is going to explain to you how you can edit your files and make them pop within Photoshop. So right now the image is now right here so what i'm going to do i'm going to show you the best way to have just going to cancel here just going to show you the best way to have the image looking great and retouching it better so the very first thing i tend to do when it comes to photoshop i come and crop the image in a ratio of 45 so i get the crop tool and i come to the ratio right here and i'm just going to select 4 by 5 or 8 by 10 because usually I post my photos on Instagram and I want the photo to fill up the whole screen when I post it. So I'm just going to crop it in just like that to slightly get rid of that soft box right there, which we're going to deal away with later on in this tutorial. So just going to press enter and it's going to start cropping. So this is the image straight from the camera roll, and I'm just going to go straight into the retouching process. So when I'm retouching, I simply use frequency separation. And with this, I'm just going to come to the background there and press Ctrl J twice right here. I'm just going to name this into low and I'm going to name this into high. So the high frequency layer contains the textures and the low frequency layer contains the colors. I'm just going to come and select the low frequency layer and now turn this off and come to filter and I'm going to come down to blur and come to gaussian blur right here and i usually for full body images i use a radius between just going to zoom out so usually i use the radius 
are between five and six so i'm just going to take this up so you have to move this up to a point when you're just starting to lose out on the details within uh the skin so i'm just going to leave it around six six looks okay and i'm just going to press okay and i'm going to come to the high frequency layer right here and i'm going to select it and remember for the low frequency i will remain with the colors and in the high frequency layer, i only want to remain with the textures so i'm just going to select the high frequency layer now activate it and i'm going to come right to after selecting the high frequency layer i'm just going to come to image and come down to apply image and with this since i have a 16-bit image right here i'm going to show you the settings for both 16-bit and 8-bit so if i told you have 8-bit right here these are settings you have to apply right on this step so come to the layer and select the low frequency layer and the blend mode if i told you have an 8-bit image make sure you select subtract opacity at 100 preserve transparency uh, and mask cannot check the scale has to be to an offset 128 make sure the preview option is checked and the invert option is not checked that is for an 8-bit image but if at all you have a 16-bit image just come and make sure you select the low frequency layer the blend mode has to be add or pass at 100 preserve transparency and mask cannot check the scale is to offset zero and make sure you turn on the invert and it's going to put the textures or the outlines on this gray kind of layer and i'm just going to come and press ok right there so after doing this i'm just going to come to the blend mode and change it from normal i'm going to change it to linear light to get back the image the way it was meant to look initially before so after this i'm just going to come and i'm going to group these two layers and pressing ctrl g after selecting both layers and i can rename that to frequency separation and i'm just going to open this select the low frequency layer and come straight and get the mixer brush tool so make sure the hardness is at zero percent make sure this option is checked because it says clean the brush after each and every stroke remember we want the brush to automatically be cleaned as we're trying to paint or even out the skin tones of the model the weight we are going to be using is nine percent the load of 75 the mix at 90 and the flow of 100 percent make sure sample always is not checked because when you check this option right here it means as you're painting or blending the skin tone colors it means it is also going to be copying information from the textures and painting them in the low frequency layer, which we don't want. So make sure that you don't check on this option right here. So I'm just going to zoom in right here and start painting or even out uh, the colors within the skin. So in order to see this better, usually I turn off the high frequency layer and I start working on the image. So reduce on the size of the mixer brush tool by using the bracket keys on the keyboard so the left bracket is going to reduce on the size of the mixer brush tool and the right bracket is going to increase on the size of the mixer brush tool and if at all your tool is looking like this cross icon make sure you press the caps lock key and that is going to get back this the way it is meant to be or the default for the brush so i'm just going to start painting colors that are looking alike in this case so i'm just going to come and continue painting those colors so I'm just going to be painting and evening out these colors just like that or the colors of the image. So I'm just going to paint just like that. So you are trying to mix colors that are looking alike and you have to use a small brush depending on the area you're trying to work on in your image. So I'm just going to use a smaller brush because I'm using small strokes trying to work on these areas just like that. And you can see it really gets the job done. Remember, we are painting after selecting on or with the low frequency layer selected, and you're just trying to blend the colors within the skin. So that's the before, after, before. Just look at the results right now. I'm just going to turn this off and I'm going to continue blending or evening out the transitions within uh, the skin of our model right here. So I'm just going to come and paint through just like that and mix and blend these colors so that they can really transition quite well or they can even look better in this case so i'm just going to come to the next area reduce on the size and i mix and blend the transitions within uh, the skin in the next area just like that come right and also 
paint just like that so i'm basically trying to even out the transitions within uh, the skin of the model so just going to zoom in slightly and i'm going to come right down here and i'm going to work right on the thigh area right here so i'm just going to come and paint through and you can see that this really gets the job done and it is really a better and more efficient or effective way to retouch skin for full body images and it's very easy and usually for outdoor images i tend to only apply uh, the mixer brush too so i'm just going to turn this back on so that you can see the details back within the image i'm just going to zoom out so that you can look at the image from a distance so that's the before after before after it is very subtle but it is really nice so i have to remove the blemishes from uh, the model skin so come and select the layer that contains blemishes which is the high frequency layer and i'm just going to come and get my clone stamp tool and settings the hardness i'm going to use zero percent the mode is normal or percent the flow of 100 percent make sure i align this check and make sure the sample is on the current layer because i want only sample information that is part of the high frequency layer just going to zoom in and i look for the areas that have blemishes within uh, this image and i'm going to clean up those blemishes so reduce on the size of your clone sample by using the open and close brackets on the keyboard and how to remove the blemishes you hold down the alternate key on the keyboard and left click on an area that is clean close the blemish and make sure the brush is slightly bigger than the blemish and simply click over it to get rid of it so that is how I am cleaning up uh, the blemishes or removing the blemishes from uh, this very image. So I'm just going to do this and do everything to clean up the blemishes from uh, this very image. And I think we are done removing those uh, blemishes from the image and it looks very nice and fine. So I'm just zooming and look for other blemishes that may exist. So I'm just going to clean up this line right here and right now we are done removing the blemishes so the next thing i'm going to do is show you a quick before and after that's the before and after before after then i'm going to come and eliminate the soft box i know that to eliminate it i'm just going to create a stamp visible layer by pressing shift alternate ctrl e on the keyboard or you can use shift alternate or shift option command e on the keyboard create a stamp visible layer and with the clone stamp tool is still selected i'm just going to copy right here alternate and copy from here and i'm just going to paint over the soft box to try and eliminate it so reduce on the size and copy sky and paste so basically it is the same method that we are using like when we are trying to clean up or remove the blemishes from the skin so using the clone stamp tool so we are done removing the soft box so right now we are done retouching and doing everything to the image so let's do a little a bit of final touches to the image i'm just going to come right here and i'm going to come to the contrast and add some contrast to the image just like that and i'm going to come to selective color and create a select selective color adjustment layer and come to the blacks and simply darken up the blacks so that the image can pop a little bit more so this is it and i'm just going to come and create a human saturation adjustment layer and desaturate everything up to around negative 88 and press ctrl command i on the keyboard and simply get a soft round brush so right click under the brushes get uh, the brush and make sure the hardness is at zero percent or percent the flat hundred percent and the mode is normal and make sure you have white on top right here so you can use the arrow or you click on these two small boxes to have black and red and you can switch in between, between black and white by using x on the keyboard or you can use this arrow so make sure white is on top and make sure this layer is selected and now we have to zoom in right here and come to the eye area because we just want to do a little bit of eye whitening to our model right here i'm just going to zoom in and we do a little bit of eye whitening reduce on the size of the brush by using the bracket keys on the keyboard and do that kind of eye whitening 
so you're now done doing the eye whitening so the last thing that you want to do or you would love to do after uh, retouching your image is saving a very nice and beautiful image so make sure you just come to file export and come to export as and it's going to open for you this window and with that open we have to put in these settings that i'm about to show you right now but remember you want to save a sharp image that won't change in color after you've been able to save it or post it on social media so make sure the form the format right here is a jpeg and make sure the quality is 100 percent and make sure you sample remember we want photoshop to slightly sharpen the image for us after or during the process of saving saving it so make sure resample is by cubic sharper and make sure you check these two small boxes in the color space so meaning when we tick these two small boxes photoshop is going to embed the colors that we color graded into the image and it is not going to be having any color change issues when you post it on social media or when you put it on a different website or device and after doing all this the image is going to load and appear right here and simply press export and look for where, where you want to save the image in that case so this is it for this tutorial and if i told you i've learned something don't forget to like this video don't forget to subscribe this channel if i told you i've been watching and not subscribed yet to this channel ronix from ronix photography thank you for watching i'll see you in yet more amazing tutorials and don't forget to keep practicing and also keep creating